Hello everyone, this will be part two of the video that we wanted to demonstrate just how awesome this uh, Radiac Will is in the past. Um, as I mentioned in the last video, uh, I've been focusing more on the finer grit wheels for just general uh, grinding. Uh, but when you get into the, or uh, the coarser grit, I should say, the 46, but when you get into uh, the finer grit, this is a Radiac, it's a Ruby Will. It's an R100, uh, the bonding is L5, so it's harder. With the 46 grit, I'm usually running an H or an I, and this is a V8 and uh, as far as it's, it's a, a closed structure, not an open structure. But this wheel, I've been using it for grinding small diameters on pins for great lengths uh, for the diameter stick out, and I've been blown away by it. Uh, I will also be uh, uh, showing you a card right now that you can look because I've had different people ask me where I can get these Radiac wheels. And this is the source where I get them from. Uh, my contact is John uh, Arter. And this is, uh, uh, it was from Grand Valley Industrial Sales, a division of Norchuk Supply. And they actually re prefer to go by Norchuk Supply. So if you don't have a Radiac supplier in your area, uh, you can contact John. Uh, tell him I sent you over there, and uh, they'll be happy to meet your needs. And I know they'll ship all over the nation. I don't know if they'll uh, ship globally, but I know they'll ship anywhere in the U.S. So you can contact him. And last week we showed you some of the components that we have uh, that we're going to need in order to grind some small diameters on some small pins already. And in the uh, previous video, I had this small V block where I was actually grinding and just having a three point contact on a pin uh, with about a half inch length. Uh, and, and I got some fantastic results. In the meantime, I made this longer V block that can hang on and have more contact on the shank. And the last video was grinding with this block uh, that we have over here uh, where we. Uh, ground a little step in there so that we can actually use uh, this square block. Let's see if I can keep my hands out of the way here. Uh, but you have a, a, a gap in here that's about 10 thousandths deep. So you got the contact point here, contact point here. And what will happen is if your pin, and I'm just going to stick it like this so it don't fall on my hand, but it would be different setup. But when, when you stick this block down on top, you're contacting at the front of the pin and the back of the pin. And uh, you can apply your screw anywhere uh, on this surface. Uh, and what I'm hoping to achieve here, I haven't tried it. You'll be the first people to see it. Uh, uh, we'll see how it works when I do it. It'll be the first time I ever tried it. But we're going to establish a three-point contact on the front and in the back. And the three-point contact is you're going to be where this round is tangent with the 45 degree angle here and where the part is tangent with the 45 degree here and then with the tangent point here on the top. And three point contacts work really good to stabilize things. If you have a two point contact, uh, which is very easy to do, like uh, examples, if you've got a boring head and you've got a three quarter inch round hole and you stick a three quarter inch uh, a bar in there that might be a few tenths smaller when you when you screw that tight on your boring head what happens is you got a contact point <coughs> where your screws hitting and then because that uh, shaft is a little bit smaller and whole you got a contact point on the very back and and you can get harmonics in there and uh, and then that will cause chatter and that's something you don't want to have in grinding when you want to have an excellent finish and uh, a real nice uh, accurate part. You want to eliminate as many of the harmonics as you can and so I'm hoping this will work pretty good. In the past I've taken this three quarter inch diameter pin and what I've done uh, for a customer he had to have this pin ground down for 1.8 inches he had to have it ground down to 150 thousandths in diameter. When I used a 46 grit wheel and even dressed and relieved most of it, I could touch here in the back when it was mounted up in the V-block, I could touch towards the back side and I was okay, but as I wound out, 
uh, you can hear that pin start singing and so I knew it was moving around I could hear the harmonics already established in it and that was only taken uh, uh, less than uh, five tenths per side cut uh, when I use the radiac wheel the 100 grit and I've done this same thing uh, I was able to grind down to the 150 without using any kind of stabilization on the end and I was taking a thousandths at a pass never even I dressed the wheel before I started yeah, I had a special dressing process which we'll demonstrate and I was able to grain down to 150 thousandths without any taper and it worked pretty good and so what we're going to do we'll set this up and we'll get this uh, in here with our new components uh, we're not going to use that one anymore we're going to use the longer v-block and we'll set that in there we'll get this clamp set in here and what we'll do these pins are already ground they're straight uh, they're just some old hardened pins that I had sitting around I don't even know what material they are but there's no bow these things are really good they're ground nice now the thing of it is is when I stick this pin in the holder get this clamp position bring that V right to the front with this other one and then what I want to do I need to grab a scale a second I already know that I could get 1.8 with the old setup I had so what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull this out a full uh, two and an eighth inches and see if I can grind about an eighth uh, uh, well we'll go just a little over two inch and we'll see if I can grind and get a full two inch cut with that wheel and if that works good coming down to 150 what I'll do with this pin I'll just keep going as deep as I can and see how deep I can get before it starts singing on me and the reason I want to do this is because I want to know where the boundaries of this wheel what I can get away with for future jobs let's see I'm gonna get a wrench yet Side here in the back. Actually, it's side here in the front. This is extremely loose. Uh, I'm barely putting any pressure on there. I'm just trying to knock it in just a little bit. And this I don't have to get perfect because of the fact that uh, I'm going to be just draining the diameter, but I want to get it running out less than a thousandths. There's a little snug on that end. And we're within a half thou over there. And we're uh, high over here, low over here. Now here's a, a little trick that experienced grinders 
no and I don't know how it's going to work with this block now that I got that gap I may have to flip it over but by positioning this clamp anywhere here I can change the positioning of this in straightness now if this bar was or this pin was bowed or bent uh, that's not a good thing to do when you clamp that down you're springing that uh, bin out and when you unclamp it will come back so what you're doing here you're not flexing or bending or distorting the part what you're doing you're actually shifting the part in the v-block if it's already straight and and you can do that and you can uh, change the actual positioning of how that pin will run out and so it's high over there so let's see if we move back okay high on the bottom let me just move this uh, both ways to see what happens so it's closer there and it more than likely moved out here as well a little bit yeah. So that actually looks pretty good. I'm going to see what happens if I go in the middle. Again, I don't really care at this point to get that just dead perfect. Straighten this up by positioning this a little different. Right there. Okay, I'm going to call it good there for the demonstration I'm doing. It'll be good enough. We're a little under two thousandths on the front, uh, about a thousand and a half on the back, and about a half in the middle. And what we'll do is uh, I'm going to mount that wheel on the grinder, get it spun up, get everything positioned, and then we'll come back and we'll show the actual grind. Okay, we uh, just took a little bit of a break. Uh, I got the wheel mounted on. I have it dressed off. One of the problems I had was if you uh, look back in the video, that uh, set screw on top of that horseshoe clamp was sticking out a little bit too far. So I had to pull this off, bring it back to the granite table, put a shorter set screw in there so I wouldn't be running so close to my hub. And also to get in here close, this is one of those occasions that I have to remove the guard from uh, the wheel so I can get in there. I would recommend keeping that guard on when you have to. I wouldn't run all the time like this. And so, anyhow, what I did, I already dressed the wheel, but that wheel is a quarter inch, uh, it's a quarter inch wheel. And what I did, I dressed it flat, and then what I did from the back side to this side, uh, uh, I relieved that wheel about five thousandths, so that when I touch down and touch a mark, I don't have a full quarter inch cut. I have about a hundred thousandths. And so that's what I did. I relieved that wheel so that I got very little of that wheel that's actually touching as I ground. And so now, before, I would stick up 1.8 inches and I was able to grind one thousandths per side. I just touched off. 
Uh, so let's see what we can do. I'll go one thousandths. And, and I also I rotated that pin 180 degrees and then I got it actually a little bit closer uh, as far as it's running it's running a thaw out on the front and a thaw on the back and almost perfect in the middle. And you can hear it, well I don't know if you can, but I can hear it now where it's running out a little bit on the front, it's cutting heavier on the spot. Once I get that uh, trued up, we'll see how it, how it works. At this point, that 46 grit wheel would have had that part singing pretty good for you. Yeah, and this one's going to sing. I'm not going to get that far out. So let's set up and let's try going back at the 1.8. And then that way I'll be able to determine whether it's that new V-block setup that I have. We'll, we'll find out if I can get away with it or not. Well, the first time it didn't work, I went back and changed a few things. I went to a single point diamond instead of a clustered diamond so that I could relieve that wheel back even further. I think I had too much surface yet with about a hundred thousandths on there. And uh, so now we got, I'm going to guess about a sixteenth. And so now I got my digital set. I'm going to try, I'm going to get the pin cleaned up first uh, just by taking a, a thousandths total. I shortened the pin up to that 1.8 that I could get away with before. I'm using a different pin. slowing my travel down a little bit and that actually ground better at this point Try for a thousandths this time per side.
Yeah, I think it likes a half thousand. And I could have swore that last time I ground these pins was a few months ago. I was getting a thou per side, but now I'm almost thinking that's a little deep for a hundred grit wheel in these conditions. So I'm going to do a, a half thou per side, a thou total, and that's probably what I had last time, because that's actually what it sounded like before. Let's see what happens here. What we just took was a thousandths per side cut. What I'm going to do now, I'm going to do a half thou per side. So before we had two thousandths total, this time we're going to have one thousandths total. Yeah, and I can actually traverse even faster. I think I was going a thou total before rather than a thou per side, and it sounds a whole lot better right there. Yeah, that's the way I remember it sounding right there. And this is real nice because it's not have you can't even hear any of the harmonics when you get to the end. I'm going to take just a couple tenths on this cut and take a blank pass and then I'm going to mic it, uh, see where I'm at, and uh, establish and see if I got any taper or not. And if I got taper, I'm not going to work it out. I'm just going to measure what it is just for the sake of this experiment. If it's the same uh, when we get to the smaller diameter, and then I know I'm not flexing. It's the taper that would be existing, but we'll see what we have. Reset the digital zero. So on the end we're 181 and just about 5 tenths. Up here we're 181 and 4 tenths. And we're 4 and a half on the... And so we're about 50 millionths difference in uh, 1.8 inches. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to just take 5 tenths at a time down. And Adam will probably fast forward this so I don't bore you to death. But when I... We get down to the 150 mark, we'll check it and we'll see how it looks taper wise. And then we'll, from there, we'll just see how far we can go down on the diameter before we have troubles.
okay, it took a little over 16 thousandths off. <coughs> we should, I think, be under uh, 150 thou. And uh, keep in mind that uh, this is 16 thou per side, so 32 total, and I haven't dressed the wheel. Another thing that's interesting was I did push this up and I started getting a thou per side. I think what was happening, I had to break that leading edge in a little bit, and I think once it broke in a little bit, and then I could pick up that thou per side, which I thought I did in the past, and it actually sounded pretty good. A 149, eight and a half. 149.8, we got exactly what we had, 50 million is different, 50 million is big on the end. So, right now I, I matched what I did for a customer, what I want to do at this point is see how far I can come down on the diameter. And uh, uh, I'll try to take a thou at a time, but because now we're at about, we're actually under 150. Uh, the more we go, that pin will start flexing, and so I'm going to have to pay attention to what it sounds like. But uh, we'll just see what uh, uh, limits we can push here. There's a thou per side, two total, that we're taking off on 150 thousandths diameter, sticking out 1.8 inches. Sounding good. I'm just slowing my traverse as I get out there a little bit more in the Y, giving it more time to cut. Okay, we should be around 140, a little under right now. And that was taking a thou per, a per side, two total, other than the finish pass and the semi finish. We're 50 millionths under 140. And here we're about a tenth under 140, so we got. A little more flex in there. Okay, no, there it is. There's a 50 millionth right there. I just uh, got a little bit better reading. And keep in mind now, that was going from 187 thousandths. We're down to 140 thousandths now, and I've never dressed the wheel since the first time. Let's see if we can get down to 130.
Well, that should put us at about 130 again, taking a thousandth per side, two thousandths total, except for the semi finish and the blank pass. And on this end, it says 130 and one tenth. On this end, we're 130, so we picked up. We picked up about maybe 50 million some more that might be springing, so we got to be getting close to the limit. I'm going to push it and see if I can go all the way down to 120. I can hear the parts singing a little bit at a thousandths per pass. I may have to back it off at this, but I'm going to see how far I can go. Here I can hear it singing a little bit, so I'll back it off. We went down another six thousandths total, so I'm going to back it off and see what I can get down uh, at about uh, one thousand total, five tenths per side. Right now we should be at about a hundred and twenty-four thousandths on that diameter. Okay, we should be real close to 120 right now. One twenty and two tenths. One twenty two. One twenty three. And one twenty three. One twenty three. 22 and a half. I'm going to stop right there because I was just taking a few tenths on the last few passes there and I can see that that's where this bar is wanting to start to sing. What we're going to do is we're going to turn the grinder off, we're going to move this on the granite table and then I'm going to measure it uh, so that uh, you can actually see the measurements on, on the pin. Okay, I know you probably couldn't see the mic over there, but this pin started out at 187. We ground it down uh, just by the scale, just scaling it roughly 1.8 inches long. And we're just a few tenths over 120 thousandths before I can see we're going to have trouble going any lower. So here we got 120, two and a half tenths. 122 tenths, 121 and a half, 122 and a half. So we're within a tenth all the way up and down this pin. Let me pull it out of the fixture. The scale? Okay. And let's put the. Adam suggested that we hold the scale up so that you can see how long it uh... can you see that Adam? Yeah. okay so that's how long we're sticking out 
And so I'm really impressed. Let me get this all out. Can you see it there, Adam? Yeah. Yeah, so you can see we started out with a 3 16 pin, worked all the way down to a 120, and I don't know if you can see it on the camera or not, but that's a pretty darn nice finish. And we took all that stock off without dressing the wheel uh, other than the way we did before we started. But this is an exercise that I wanted to do to see what I could get away with. Uh, and it's also because uh, this uh, wheel that we got from Radiac, it's really an awesome wheel. It blows me away at how free cutting this was. If this wheel wasn't as free cutting as it was, there's no way in the world I would have got away with what I just did right here. And so, so that Radiac wheel is awesome for this small type work like this. And this goes back to the whole thing that I talked about before that you want to pick the right wheel for the right job wheel selection is probably the number one important thing that you need to do and then the proper dressing techniques because even if I had this wheel if I wouldn't have relieved that wheel the way I did I would have never got away with this the actual cutting edge on it uh, was probably about 60 to 70 thousandths wide. The wheel was quarter inch wide. I, I dressed it so that uh, I only had a lip of about 60 to 70 thousandths that was actually cutting. And when I first started, I couldn't get a thou per side. It was singing on me at a bigger diameter. And I think what happened is uh, that uh, because I had a 5,000 step in there, I think, I think that step had to break in and wear away and knock some of the rough edges off there. And as I did that, I noticed I could get that thou per side, which I, I thought I could remember that I had uh, when I originally ground some pins for a customer. But anyhow, I think I'm going to have to play around uh, uh, with this wheel a little bit more and some of these pins and the length and diameter ratio and see what I could get away with. But uh, anyways, uh, this is going to be it for today. I hope you enjoyed. We'll see you next time.